Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How and it is in fact, it's Ask Finola How, the 28th episode of Ask Finola How, which is fantastic, I have to say, I'm really glad. So in this week's episode, we take yet another real question from a real entrepreneur because these are the best questions, you know, um, because this is what other entrepreneurs are asking. And this is what's important to people. So let's share this question of the day with you here. Um, and the question today is, okay, I never know what to say in my content marketing. How do I know what's valuable for people? And the person went on to say, I feel like everyone already knows how to do the things I'm good at, that I'm almost afraid to post. I don't know what content would be valuable to my audience. Really common question. And also a really, this is not in my answer or my advice here. But it is we often think that the things that are so natural to us, that are so second nature to us, we might have a tendency to undervalue them because, you know, they're natural to us. So then they're easier for us, but it's not easier for everyone else. And that's the first thing to remember. Should have written that down in my notes, I have to say. But anyway, don't ever underestimate what your gift is, what you're natural at, because that's what people want from you. So... I shall go on with my tuppence worth for you to hear today. So when you're thinking about content, okay, and the content that you want to produce, and you're thinking strategically about your content, what I want you to think about is first start here. You know, you sit down, you take a breath and you say, what's the space I want to own? Okay. Now you know this, you know the space you want to own, because this is the reason you're in business in the first place. You are wanting to solve somebody's problem take away somebody's pain, reduce their pain, whatever it is, in one form or another, it's a pain point you want to address. So this could be because you're a nutritionist. It could be you're really good at Excel spreadsheets. It could be you're really into cloud computing. You really want to help people learn, help kids how to learn how to play better, how to express themselves. It could be social media management. It could be anything, okay? It's what you're driven to do. It's your purpose of what you're here for. So what we want to do is, you know, start with that. Take a moment and start there and write down the space that you want to own. So what is that piece? OK, and you say and you write it in sentence form because you're trying to access it directly. So you want to actually get that out. So you do that. OK, the next thing you want to do. So that's your perspective on the value that you bring. And you're always phrasing it in the form of how you're helping serve somebody else, whether it's with a problem with a pain point, whatever it is, okay? The next thing you do is you sit down and you use good old Google, you know? So you start with, okay, what if that's my, per, my customer's pain point or that's the thing that I want to help do in the world, what are the people, so of the people that I want to help, what are they typing into Google to find that answer? And they're typing it into Google to find an answer because they don't know I exist yet, okay? So what are they typing into Google to get the answer to do that? So you sit yourself in your customer's shoes. You open up Google and you type in as if you were trying to find the answer. And it could be stuff for uh, kids aged 10 to 13 to do. It could be, I want to get pregnant. It could be, um, I want more energy. Uh, I want to speak to a nutritionist. It could be, I want to make my team more efficient could be loads of things. So you type in what you would type in if you had that problem and you watch the results. Well, first you pause and you see what does Google offer you in that drop down list? What are they kind of prompting you with so that you can get a sense of the customer's voice? What are they doing? How are they searching for an answer to their problems? So if you're pretending to be to the customer, you start to type into Google and this drop down list comes up. You're getting a sense of other language that your customer is using that you may not be using because you'll be in your lingo head. You know that lingo, that shorthand language that we all use in our own areas of expertise. So see that prompt that comes from Google in the top part of that document of your, you know, of your search console and take a note and then kind of play around with it. Click on these things. What are people saying or in this space that are also trying to solve this problem? What are you learning from the marketplace? Because effectively, Google shows you the marketplace really, really simple. So have a look around. So you're going, 
you start with, this is the space I want to own. These are the people I want to help. And then you put yourself in your customer's shoes and you go, well, if I was my customer, how would I find the answer? And you behave as if your customer is there. You take notes along the way, okay? You also can do this in Twitter. What are the hashtags people are using to find this answer? What do we see things trending? Do the same in Instagram. You can do the same in LinkedIn. You can do the same in Facebook. How are people finding the answer to that problem? What are you seeing as a trend? And note it down, okay? Also, a couple of other really good places are, <clears throat> no, I'll tell you those in a second. <laughs> okay, so you get all this information, you've made notes and you're kind of really looking at it. As you make notes, you'll realize, well, there's loads of blogs here I could post. There's loads of social media posts I could do. There's loads of stuff I could do to answer those problems, but don't do it yet. Don't do that content yet. Because we want to make sure that you are owning the space. You'll hear me talk about that a lot. So you've got that little bit of research done. We need to go to the next level, okay? And what I want you to do with the answers that you find on that sheet of paper is you pick four topics. We're going to call them pillar topics. And this is defining that space. So it's not just some big ambiguous thing of one big huge space. It's four key areas that you are going to use as your pillars for your content going forward. You make them big enough like buckets, you know what I mean? They're buckets that you're gonna fill. And this is pulling together all of the different ideas that are around that space that you want to own that actually perfectly express that space. So when we talked about figuring out the space that you want to own, we're gonna figure out the four pillars that will hold that space for you. So that could be if in your, and your, excuse me, <laughs> if you're a nutritionist, it might be about weight loss. It might be about energy level. It might be about um, whatever the challenges are that a nutritionist can help. If you're a nutritionist, that's what you might do. If you're a yoga instructor, what are the four common things? And it could be even things like more energy, more strength, flexibility. You play with these as core topics because this is what your customer is searching for. If it's about parenting, it might be parenting in highly sensitive kids. It could be high anxiety. So it's you're figuring out what's the four most common things people are searching for in this space and will that really frame the space that I want to own? That's what you create as your, what, that's what you choose as your pillar topics, okay? That's how you decide what content to do. Then you go, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, one little more thing for you to do. When you see that, that gives you the inspiration for what to blog about, do videos about, do um, social media posts about. But maybe you're kind of still a little stuck. You got some inspiration by looking at other people. There's a couple of other places you can look to. One is a great site called answerthepublic.com. And what that does is when you type in you know, one of your pillar topics, what it'll do is give you this visual expression of how what things are being searched for and ideas, it's like a map of ideas, a mind map of ideas all around who, where, why, and it'll actually fill it in based on answering those key questions, but it'll also look at search results for you. And it gives you an effectively a map of everything around that topic that people are searching for. You've done your own search, you framed it around the space you want to own. Now you're framing it around what your customer wants to know about. You have a map of content. Another great one for you, okay? Not to overload you, but these are really good tools. Headline Studio, which is a service by a company called CoSchedule. You can pay for it. Answer the Public is free. Headline Studio is something like $99 for the whole year. And if you say, for example, you're doing a blog around these topics, okay? You're gonna release a blog a week or a video a week and you want to give it a really good caption, but you also want to know how good it is from a search perspective, okay? So if you type in your blog title into Headline Studio, it will do two things for you. And I think I'll do an episode on blogging because I'm asked about blogging all the time, but I'll give you a quick snapshot. So the first thing is, it'll check how clickable your topic is and the second thing it'll do is it'll do an SEO search for you. So you will see in that topic, 
is anyone searching for this topic? And it'll tell you if it's trending, it'll tell you what's competing, and it'll also give you ideas of other topics around that space. That's loads to work with in terms of ideas for your content. I'll give you another one, okay? I just wanna check, oh yeah. So the other thing that I would say to you is a great book. It's always great to have a great book. So a fantastic book if you're stuck for content. And this will help you around what to blog about for your website and around your, specifically around your services or products that you're offering, no matter what it is. And it's a book called They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. And it just really grounds this very simple question of what are all the things your customer is asking you about to get clarification on, on your product or your service? Well, answer them. And it'll give you a framework, a really simple framework to get all those possibilities there. A great tool to use. I advocate it for everybody, okay? And then lastly, I will say this to you. Don't forget to ask your customers, okay? So if you've got good relationship with customers, or you know, even if you're looking at how you're blogging or how you're posting and somebody interacts with your posts, ask them what resonated. Anybody who's commented on your, our stuff here, you'll know I'm asking um, all the time what resonated, what struck a chord with you, because I want to learn what my customers or my audience wants to know more about. Because when I'm more in tune with my customers, I can serve them better. So never forget to do the simple answer to that question of what is the content that they want? Ask them, ask them at every opportunity, ask them in your socials, ask them one-to-one -one when you have really good relationships with them, just ask them and your customers want to tell you. So help them help you. There you go. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. Um, I hope that helped. Let me know if you have a question as an entrepreneur that you'd like an answer to or some advice for. Um, I've seen a lot, you know, I've over 25 years in business, so I can help you. And this has been Ask Finola How, and it has been episode 28. And it's been all about, I never know what to say in my content marketing. How do I know what's valuable for people? This will help you. Take care and have a wonderful day. And I shall see you next week.